What's up, guys? Welcome to Chalk Talk. This is week seven, obviously a little delayed, but nonetheless, here we are. Been a crazy week. Try to do these on Monday. Try to be more consistent. We're going to go through offense first, going to go chronologically, do our best to, as you can see on the upper left-hand corner, give you an idea of the timestamp of these important plays, right? So it's not perfect, but timestamp it. We're not going to watch every play. Can't do that. Try to draw up, illustrate, talk through things as best we can, all right? Try to watch the play through once and then come back together, talk about it, go through as we can, right? Talk about the nuance. So third and two, this is the 69-yard Jerome Ford run. So here's a big part of what I like. With split zone, you get a lot of familiar zone, inside zone steps for the guys up front, right? So you're going to be working the double teams, climbing, but they run what's called split zone. So they're going to take this inside, you know, tight wing receiver, going to, going to block the backside crash here. But they also take more on a high course to impact the eyes of these second level players, right? Just make them think, make them slow down, uh, whatever you can to just that, that brief moment of hesitation. So as we watch it through here, kind of on the slow, watch 23 on the high side here. He's chasing, right? You get that split action. This corner on the right side of your screen obviously isn't seeing the play develop. He has no clue where the football is. You get a nice job up front. Working double teams to climb. Good job by Batonio, Posich, and then and Joku staying on on the backside. And it just takes that split second and you're out the front door. So that's a great way to start, right? Seven nothing. You're feeling pretty good getting that result on a third and two play. So good stuff there. Next play we're going to break down is going to be less fun. So third and eight. Let's watch it through first. Going to get a little late bump from the running back to push the quad strong. Quarterback's a little panicked getting out, right? Trying to get the ball before the clock expires. So let's go back and watch it through again. All right. So the route concept is, uh, is you know, it's a popular Stefanski concept. He likes to run floods. He likes to run variations of flood. So in this one, you're going to get good one at the top of this route concept. He's going to be pushing to the corner, trying to take any sort of late down cover two situation. And again, this is a third down. You're going to get Amari to put a, a bind on this corner, a high-low read, trying to leverage this safety, right, or whatever safety. If this is a down safety, this is even better because then your leverage is perfect. This is a, exactly what you want. And then if this down safety is occupying, sometimes you'll see a little in and out. We get a little curl here on the front side. So basically, if you're getting you know, cover three, you're just leveraging this safety here. What is he doing? What is he playing? If he's back... Take the third and seventh throw for the first down. The thing is, as Watson comes out, the read is pretty simple. He can throw to two places at this moment. No problem with either of them. You can take Coop right here for the first down. Or if you want to chase a big play, that's fine. But this ball has to be on the sideline up and away. So 32 can't undercut it. And this corner up to the top of the screen here also can't run underneath and cut it. It has to be up on the sideline, up on the sideline. That's the point, right? So let's play it through. You can see it developing nicely. This is exactly what we want. You got a window to throw it to. The problem is it's an underthrown ball because Watson still can't throw apparently, and it gets undercut. If this ball again is up here, driven up the sideline where Goodwin doesn't have to stop, he can keep running his route, this is potentially a touchdown play but we have to stop it's undercut interception that's your first indicator right that the he just can't throw it this is your next third and seven let's watch it through so this is after the colts have now taken a 14-7 lead but we're still in the first quarter it's a really bad choice let's go through again and paint up exactly what route concepts we're getting right so this is a um Three-man route combination at the bottom of the screen, pretty popular. So you're going to get an under route meant to leverage. You're going to get a seam meant to high-low right here. And off of that seam, we got answers, right? You got a, a dig or a basic coming underneath that. On the high side, if you like your two-over-two two matchup, you have an outside release, and then you have a speed out. Again, third and seven. If you think you can hit this, if you got... You know, if one out here, Cooper is going to carry him vertical. You think you can hit this ball for a first down, catch and run? You can throw it. 
if you like the three man side, you know, you got four over, right? Early indications are telling you it looks like quarters, but teams on late downs, especially Bradley's defense, like to play, like to play a lot of cover two, sometimes some cover six, where you could get half, right? You could get a half quarter, quarter look, right? So you have options. So let's go through exactly what unfolds in front of him and the decision that he makes. So one, two, three, four, five at the top of his drop. I mean, I got a statue defender here. I, you know, I got, again, this is the, this is a bracket look over here in your cover six. So he's going to be jumping. This corner is going to be jumping here. You can throw a honey shot here if you, if you want, but he's really looking down the middle of the field where you have what I call a statue defender here because his head is turned, right? You can put this ball into this general area and give him a chance. If not, if you want to throw one, two, three, four, five ball out, you can try to hit this under route before 23 here playing his hook drop, reads it, right? Or again, you have the basic, which is tough because this guy's driving on it, right? Strong's driving on it. But you have windows. You can see how these things work itself open. You have options. The ball should be thrown at the top of the drop. Still should be thrown. There is a pocket formed here to throw this football. At this point, you have two answers. Here, you can consider this a tough throw, but it's an option. And then you have David. Doesn't throw any of them. Presses out. You have a hurt shoulder. Let's just toss this sucker into the stands, right? Or run it out. Run it out. I don't mind if you run it out to try to pick up some yards and duck out of bounds. What you cannot do is fail to see this player right here as you're looking and trying to throw back across your body with a bum shoulder and make this throw, which is an easy interception that just got dropped. So you catch a break. So Watson mentally on top of physically not there. Okay, into the first quarter possession, P.J. Walker in now. Want to look at some good Browns run. They run a lot of what I call weak side wide zone. So obviously this is your strong side. If you're looking at one, two, three inline defenders or um, blockers, apologize. And then, you know, um, your tight slot. You count the center, always count the center offenses and defense, count the center as a half. So you got what, three and a half versus two and a half. But the Browns liked attacking the shade here, feeling like they could work, climb and make a cut off here. They liked wide zone away. They were they really ran a lot of it in this game. So you can see how it sets up. The angles are pretty good. Sorry, I'm supposed to run it through. Good cut by Kareem. Pretty simple stuff. We'll watch it again. Kind of slow it down. Good job by Dewan taking care of the front side. You can see Teller climb. Betonio climb. Both guards climb. 71-55. Postage and Will's doing a good job riding their man down the line. Look at that cut. That's a big lane. It's a nice job, right? So the only thing you would like is, you know, you, you again, this is where the bootleg stuff comes off of it. If these backside edge guys are making the play down the field, you hope to get a little bit more. Now, here's the problem. Now, we're actually, we'll talk about that later. Talk about that later. This is a reverse. Nice little 17-yard gain. Good job by Walker staying on. Here's why I really like this play. So let's go back and watch this. This is a 17-yard run into the first quarter. Uh, the Browns do a great job of selling it with a concept that they like to run. So they like to run these pin pull blockers, right? Either pull the guard, pull the center, two pullers from the gun. They like to read it and try to cut up inside of it. You can see that. And that has an impact on everybody's eyes reading that, right? That's what everyone's reading. And then you get high side, the farthest outside looping around. It's a good design. I, I'm just saying I really like the design here. Watch everybody's flow because they're reading the concept the Browns like to run two pullers, right? Whether that's the tackle in the center in this case, or sometimes it's the garden center, whatever they want to do to attack it. You can see how this play pops out for a pretty good run. And again, Walker, good job blocking job by Dewan downfield almost makes enough to make that play happen into the end zone. So good game uh, down in the goal line here. So a little shift out, get Kareem. I want to call out Jed on this play. This was a popular, play. I think on um, AQ Shipley hit on this one on the McAfee show. So this is a fun one. You'll watch this trap. So again, want to make sure I draw this up a little bit here. You get a really good job by Jed jab jabbing and then getting to his man. 
Let's see if I can click on the pin this time. Jabbing and climbing, and that watch the impact it has on 94 to get up field. 52 gets up field. You get a down kick out of these two guys. It works out to be a two for one opportunity. And then Kareem really has, you know, a pretty pretty clear path to the end zone once he reads and processes, right? So Jed's ability right there and Hudson both kind of jabbing and letting their guy go creates two upfield players so you can get downhill right now. Jed does a good job. You know, I don't know if they're communicating it. I mean, it's hard to imagine they're communicating it for him to jab and then, then work to the, all the way to the backside. Um, you have Hudson kind of in a wide receiver stance. It's funny here, um, but he's going to let his man go and then climb too. If you if you do that, you have nobody to – it's it's literally a walk-in touchdown, but uh, I'm not sure how they're coaching that up. Probably not worried about the backside linebacker all the way outside the opposite tackle, right? But nonetheless, like the design – and Kareem just has to run through one man at the line at the at the goal line, and it's a touchdown, right? So there you go. 14 all. Next play out. This is 9:23 in the second quarter now. Gonna look probably a little bit more weak side wide zone. There you go. Problem is too many negative runs for the Browns. They're getting some good positive runs, right? This is second and seven. You cannot negative run. Second and seven. Can't do it. We go through it. We have to handle the front side 94. He can't be the problem. You're either doing one of two things right here. Okay. You're either hooking him so we can run around it or your inside arm and guiding him so that we can try to cut off of it. You can't let him dominate your movement. Right. Trying to hook him. Jed's clearly trying to hook him, but he doesn't get him hooked. Now you can say, and this is probably where Nick would be pretty good, is kind of pressing, pressing, pressing here, and then cutting downhill. Maybe this is something Jerome Ford can learn from this. I'm not sure who they would blame, but I feel like the 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 what you're reading as a back is the butt of this tackle, right? If he's trying to work to seal him, I'm not going to cut inside of him. I'm going to try to get outside in what's called the bounce course, right? And so it's, you can bounce it. You can do what's called a bang course, which is up inside, or you can bend it all the way to the back side. So here we are. Dead play though. Not good enough at the point of attack. And then again, that's, that's negative yardage on second and seven, which creates a third and 10. Here's the play. Second quarter starting. P.J. Walker is going to face a ton of this in Seattle, all right? They're going to walk up and mug. They're going to give you a whole bunch of different looks, right? whole bunch of different who's blitzing stuff here. Are we bringing seven? Are we bringing six? Are we bringing five? Here's what the concept is kind of fun, right? So they're only going to drop out five defenders, right? Three deep, two under, or uh, two deep, three under. So... You know, I like the concept. They're kind of running a dagger, right? Pushing through the middle with a backside or frontside dig. And then you're getting a backside drag to high low it, right? So your read has to be the window, right, of opportunity. So if you want the ball out right now, if you get this football out right now, off your drop quick, speed up your process. If you get it here, and you put it out in front of him in this window, he has a chance to catch it, turn, and get upfield, right? If you hold on to this and throw later, you're going to get this drive answer right here. Because what you're trying to do is let this guy, if you can hang on to it a second longer, but again, it's hard because you're getting heated up, right? So they're bringing six after the quarterback here. You would want to see if you can get this defender here, this safety, I believe, to bite there so you can get the drag work or sorry, the dig working in behind it. But this is why pressure combined with coverage works, right? Process is just a beat low. You'll see him shuffle, shuffle, shuffle the feet before he activates. Boom, boom, boom. It's a little late. And if he had caught that on the front side of it, catching it here, instead of what I said, it has to be caught kind of right here. Catch here. You're going to run into a player. You don't have a chance. So, it's an idea you'll see Cooper kind of working his dig in right there. But again, seven 
six man pressures will will do that to you, heating you up. So now we're late in the second quarter, first and ten. It's twenty one seventeen at this point after the Browns kicked that field goal. Another run on first down. Sorry, play action on first down. Just missed this one, and here's why. Let it play through. Sorry, guys. Jed, you can't give up this pressure. I think we have a chance to complete this corner route if we don't get beat inside and into the quarterback's face. Again, it's like the smallest little thing, right? Where Jed gets bullied, quarterback has to fade away from it, can't get his body weight into it, and we miss it by a fraction of an inch. Right there. This is a concept I like. I want to kind of pinpoint it. Uh, I've, I've been talking a lot about the Browns needing to do a little more motion on the snap, right? To, to alleviate some of the man coverage stuff. So this is, it, it turns into a form of, you know, mesh in a sense without the second mesh player. But a lot of times you'll see, Teams run mesh where you get that that middle squatter, right? So you'll get, so you'll see here, you'll get this, and then you'll get a mesh player, and then you'll get a middle squat in case to pull out the zones. So you'll get that opportunity. Um, this one is without it. I kind of like it because it turns into a high low. You'll see the two outside receivers on a second and ten are running a bit deeper concepts here. But what you like is watch the impact that pulls here. Walker's eyes carry the backside middle wreck in, right? He gets up field. And this is where the legs do a good job of helping him create a first down. That's a good job of extending and, and finding an answer off of extending the play. So, so again, now we're in the third quarter now. So again, we've jumped a little bit. The Browns kicked a lot of field goals. Obviously, it's 27, 21. I want to kind of highlight, I, I didn't think David played a great game from a physicality standpoint right here. So he, this is just a little tight end wham where they're influencing and they're just downhill influencing this three tech. If you get this block made, now it's a hard block. That's the Forrest Buckner. That's no joke, right? That's no joke. If you get this block, watch. You're past that influencing 51 here. You got two over. You got the linebacker blocked up by Posich. You get through this, you got a real run up the right sideline with great leverage. But we don't get the block, and that's the outcome, right? Now, again, that's a hard block. Like, Buckner's really good. So I want to reiterate, that's not an easy ask, but that's the play that you need to make. Third and 10, let's let this one go through. And again, huge pressure, huge pressure. but. From the pressure, the Browns are clearly trying to do this simple. Con They're trying to give on these third and tens. Oh, sorry, guys. Got to click the right thing. They're trying to give these guys answers here to run through. And then this tight end kind of working off of it. And, and you'll see it. It's, it's pretty open. You get this football to David right there. That's a first down. It's not easy because, again, if there are five in coverage, they're bringing six full up front. There's a chance there. If you read, I mean, if, again, you can see he's creeping. You have to see this creeping left side. You can get it to him. You got a chance. The Browns are getting crushed by these pressures because these backup quarterbacks, they did to Jacoby a lot last year, couldn't handle it. Third and six, next possession. Again, Browns up 30 to 28 at this point. This is a good job, right? Third and six. You get a middle settle from David. I think what's going on here is, again, the Browns were running another one of these where they wanted him to drag it off and then kind of have a middle set, right? And kind of high-low right here or right here, wherever the coverage bumps. But David reads that he can't keep continuing the flat, sorry, the drag. So he hooks it up because he doesn't want to run into 23 right here. So he hooks it up. 
is an answer. And he, and he brought six again, just a different look of bringing six. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five in deep coverage. Good job, finance. It took a hit. Actually, I ended up being a 15-yard penalty for roughing, so that turned into a really nice gain. For, so, again, 30-28, still the score. Browns have been running this under center toss, you know, toss lead really well. And, and, and again, it's been a great job from Donovan cracking, allowing Jed to pull, but they have been really effective getting out and running this concept. Watch Joel. They're running wide zone, essentially. Right? Just crack, pull, run wide zone course for your under your um, offensive line, create angles. Good run. That's, a nine, that's an eight-yard gain. A big drive here. That's an eight-yard gain on first down. We're going through all four of these plays. Now, here's the Browns' biggest problem. They'll gain yards on first down, and then they'll have these issues. So second down, second and two. Let's watch it through. Could be a first down. Two problems. These two fellas here on duo just don't take care of 51. Guess who wins inside? You guessed it. And then Hudson also doesn't take care of 45. What two players stop the play? 51 and 45. Have to do your job, man. Asking him to bounce it is possible, but you're 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 looking at this from a running back perspective, guys. I mean, like, here's your path, right? You feel good about that. Yeah, you could bounce this and one on one with the corner, but I mean, inside it's second and two, but you can't do anything about this tight end getting bullied, and then so you get no, you get no gain. Now here's third and two. Put David in tight. Let's go through it slow. We're just ISOing. Very simple concept. Boom, double, climb, work double to climb. Here, here. That's your concept. Very straightforward. Everyone's doing okay. 85 doesn't create much movement. Chicken wing. And again, now the backside too. Jed gets beat across his face. You're blown up again. So you've run three straight plays. You got eight on first down, then two zeros. Now you get to the fun fourth down that everybody remembers. Woof. That's a beautiful play call. You got to be able to execute it, man where you're set up i mean 40 is running off because they're in man he's not a factor so you just have to use 88 to either run up inside of this or if he's gonna inside then run it around the side doesn't get any easier but you can't catch the pitch have to catch a pitch there's no overhand pitch that is so hard a bat can't catch it it is right where it should be, right out in front. He doesn't even touch it. That's extremely frustrating. All right. Fourth quarter now. Quite a few plays on fourth quarter to break down. A little flea flicker screen. You like that. Get two pull out in front of it. Nothing to really say other than I really like the design of any flea flicker screen will always result in some pretty positive gains if you catch them in zone. 12.57 now, second and five. Here's your wide zone. Here's the problem. Who's taking care of 32? This player right here. Can we make this guy do something? Can he come through here and maybe block if he's not going to be a part of the run? doing nothing watch 32 just trigger downhill and blow this play up can we crack this player is there anything like a, a fun little wrinkle to hear would be a little crack exchange where he sees inside he cracks on 32 and then you're outside for this one right that'd be fun because we have everything walled off here 
if if we have a chance for Joel to get to this backer, but nobody's accounting for this player right here. We've got two players just kind of meandering out here doing nothing. So as you can see here, it results with nobody covering down on 32. He blows up the play. Second and five is a loss, right? So now third and six. We're going to bump the back again to, to strong. Good job picking it up. Hey, they said we want to come back to the same route we ran earlier. We like this play so much. We missed it earlier. We're going to come back to it. Here. Here. And we're going to drive the sideline and put a high-low conflict in place. We know we're going to get a curl flat defender. We'll put a bind here. Is he going to cover the hitch? Is he going to cover this out route? How are we going to leverage the corner? Right? Perfect. And this isn't even a big jump at all. This direction is just a good throw on time where it needs to be for a first down. So, again, still 31-30, 11-43. Big drive. This is the play after you got a big first down. The play right after the play we just watched. A six-yard loss. You get that hook. Here's the problem. You got two lead blockers now, right? So you get this seal here. You got a lead here. You got a lead here. We should be in pretty good shape. For either here, here, to be in a positive gain scenario. Problem is, if Donovan's passing, which he is, that's fine. You can't have two wide receivers just not touch anybody. So if Donovan's climbing here, and you have more pulling around here, this player wins inside. And this player wins inside. And the play is dead. It's awful, man. You got to do your job. And I think that's where Ford got hurt, if I recall. Third and 16 now. And this is a bummer. You want to talk about having a chance to make a big play. All right, I'll play it through. Sorry about that. And this is this is this is a touchdown, folks. Watch Amari Cooper at the bottom of the screen. They're just running a form of three-man verticals with a, with a, with a late release. Uh, it's actually dagger to the far side, so you're going to get – let me make sure I draw this up for you. You're going to get a middle push, a deep dig, chip release from David. And Amari is running a little stutter here and, and go, and boy, does he get 40. And this coverage works out where you're getting low. They're sitting trying to take away the sticks. In the middle of the field, safety's playing the three-man side. And my goodness, this should have been a touchdown. I mean, they're, they're playing cover three, a variation of it. I mean, this has got to be thrown out here, away, back toward the sideline. You cannot get – this player has no impact on this throw. And you leave it inside. I mean, geez, at this point, you guys can see what I'm talking about. If you just put this football in this box right here, you, it's a touchdown. This is a big miss. I mean, it's a punt, but it's a touchdown. 8-22, so 31-30 Colts. Two, uh, second and six. It's a nice little wind back screen. I don't think they do enough of this. Good move by Elijah right there, right? So you're going to release the tackle and guard to the bottom of the screen, to the field. Do a good job here of tunneling up inside of that. Good job by Jed. All you have to do is get in the way. I'd like Amari to do something, but good job by Elijah Moore making some players miss. First and 10 now. I think it's the very next play. Moved in the right direction. Want to go wide zone weak. Good run. Going to see a lot of Pierre strong this week. This is a good run. This is exactly the cut you want to make. Hat on hats, running them by the backside. Good job by Harrison Bryant being there to wall off. Pretty good run. That's eight yards. Sorry, I actually ended up being six. I apologize for that. So six yards. So second and four. Let's see what we can do. Let's go wide zone week again. 
Dewan Jones doesn't touch him. Looking around confused. These two are trying to communicate what they're doing with with this player, and he doesn't take him. If you do take him, you have a chance. If you get this player blocked up right here, if you're pulling up and through for 45, why it's got a nice angle, good wall off right here. This is why you draw it up this way. If Joel keeps fighting, Postage is fighting, Jed is on the backside fighting, it's all right where you want it to be. So that's now a negative play again. So now they end up kicking a, lay, a deep field goal there to make it 33-31. Colts get the Pittman touchdown, which we'll watch in a minute. So here is the first play out on the final drive when the Browns get it back. I want to give you an idea of the NFL's margin for error and just how sometimes things break in your favor. You're going to see David run a seam. You're going to see Shaq Leonard paint it perfectly right here, 53. And this is an easy interception, and the game is over. If it's not for the hand that knocks this football down from Buckner right here, you'll see it. I think Walker just misses the read. Watch it. The wide view doesn't really give you the best look at it. He's throwing this ball to David up the seam. And that ball would have been intercepted, and Leonard knows it. Look at him. He's got his hands on his head down here. But again, you get a chance. You keep fighting. You get to third and 10. So, again, liking to play cover two. So this is your look. They want to take away your short answers. Cover two, eyes inside, right? Hook, middle hook. Cover two, cover two. Soft squat. He's going to turn a run with him once he realizes nothing is coming out his direction. This is just a good throw from PJ up the sideline. Just out of reach. From the end zone view, you get lucky here that, again, they're mugging it, so they're showing you we're going to bring six. Joel does not have his best work on that play, and that ball just gets thrown, and you can see that margin for error is so small, right? Buckner's a hell of a player right here. Joel kind of lunges. He tries to get the hand on the chest, and that's this is an idea of how these guys do it, right? Watch Joel trying to get the punch on the outside arm. Watch Buckner perfectly timed the chop swim. Gets him. And look at the – it's just – it's the NFL. Football can be a beautiful game, and that's a crazy play. Third and ten when backs are against the wall. So the Browns come out very next play. And they go to the pin pool I was talking about. They pull the center and the front side guard. That's an easy 13 yards, right? So this is a fun design, right? You go down here, kick here, climb, pull up and through. We don't care so much about these two players. We're off to the races on the front side. These two are non-factors. Boom, boom. 51 doesn't get him until he's 15 yards downfield. Love that. Browns love it so much. They say, let's go to it again. All right? Let's go to it again. The problem is 51 this time says, eh, fool me once. Fool me once. I know what you're doing. Going back to the well. Kick out. Here. Here. Right? Dewan's even trying to pull up through, but 51 does a good job. Now, here's what I would like to be able to do. Can we read him? Can we can we make that a little tougher on him, slow it down, and use a mobile quarterback to escape? That's something I'd like to see them add with guys like Walker, Watson, DTR. There's the cut up. Be fine to gain five or six, but Quiddy Pay does a good job on the backside running it down. Second and nine now. Three-man check release. This is just deep curl spacing. So you're trying to really find holes in the zone, and this one works out perfect. Watch Donovan. You get guys trying to sit in the windows of either quarters coverage or two, right? For whatever reason, through the three-man rec side, this hook defender jumps out 
trying to take away a, what he expects maybe to be a dig here. Leaves Donovan wide open, 17 yards. Browns are cooking. Right? Now, first play after that one, first and 10, they go to the same same run concept again. Okay, here, wall it off, kick out, try to get up and through to be here and here. We're here for the backside, but the Colts have said again, we've seen it too many times. Buckner defeats Jed, right? 53 gets through quick. I'm sorry, I think that's 33. Joel gets blown up trying to kick out, and that one's dead on arrival. So maybe switch that scheme up after you pop one. Maybe don't go back to it too many times. Third and four now, 47 seconds left. We're in the nitty-gritty. This is your illegal contact play. It's very close, guys. It is very close. And they're heating you up. You know they're going to heat you up. You have you have to kind of sense that somebody here is coming. They're going to put pressure on you. Your check release late is a great option in these scenarios. Right? His eyes are left side anyway. Look at it. They should be at least. I guess he is trying to isolate. His eyes are trying to isolate on Amari, who's running a post corner. And he runs it well. I mean, it could be a touchdown. He's throwing it to be a touchdown ball. All right, so he's at the top of the field running. Post corner. Sell inside, plant it back outside. The question is, did the contact happen before he throws it and the fumble occurs? I would say, yes, that contact has happened and the ball has not been released yet. Quarterback hasn't been sacked yet. You can even go even slower. Like that is illegal contact right there. He's impeding the progress of Amari. So it's close. That call could go either way. Either way. Worked out for the Browns. All right, next play. First and 10, 38 seconds left. Not entirely sure why we don't throw David here other than maybe you don't want the clock to run. You're just getting a variation of, of, of smash here, getting a high-low read. You're kind of pressing here and then working out on the right side. I mean, David has great leverage. and I, I don't know if this is predetermined, but I don't like throwing this, this ball. I mean, at this point, you, you know, the corner's telling you he's going to be bracketing here. I'm just throwing this ball to David. It works out in your favor. They throw a flag. And he is holding his arm. I mean, again, he is holding his arm quite clearly right there. Right in front of the official. That's a high throw. Maybe he can jump up and get it if the hold doesn't happen. But 39 jumping around. He did grab his arm. First down and goal. Play action. Trying to do one of two things. And here's what you could have done. This player and this player are running to cover here. Just throw it here. It's wide open. I mean, either of them are open. It's fine. You throw it to David. It could have been caught, right? But no one's covering Brian. That's an easy touchdown. The guy's back is turned. Come out. You come off this play fake. Know what you're looking at. Back is turned. It's a touchdown. I mean, again, it's fine. It should have been a touchdown. Hits David right in the hands. Got to bring that in. Good job by the DB breaking it up, but David's got to bring that in. But, you know, it's that's one touchdown out of four, right? Next play. This would be two touchdowns out of four. This is a fun little scheme. Under center, right? Browns like to run jet motion into a run. They're going to sell like, hey, we're going to the pass. We're going to run, run the back to the flat. Oh. Guessing this one came a little too quickly. David is not prepared. I'm right in the face. Touchdown number two that they have drawn up. Now we go bunch. 
25 seconds left. Trying to just run some spacing confusion. And this play's covered pretty well, right? They do a good job of bracketing all this. And they miss another touchdown throw. You guys would have been sick. I would have been sick if they didn't get this touchdown here on fourth down. You'll see in a minute. Colts do a good job of passing off and bracketing. 45 is where he's supposed to be. Good job by Dewan staying on. And oh, man, great job by Elijah Moore here at the high side, turning and boom. He's open. It's just a missed throw. Just missed him. All right, fourth down, 19 seconds left. They're literally just going power. Bryant does just enough when he's on his knees here to stay on. Kareem is just physical enough to score. It wasn't by much. Kevin talked about having a lot of confidence that they would be able to run this play, and they did everything's pretty well done. Bryant kind of got bullied, but did just enough to stay on. So defense has some moments that we definitely need to talk through. This is early in the game, right? So this is your third and seven that leads to a touchdown. Miles jumps. Hey, man, just go. Just, just blow the play dead. Nothing good comes of a free play for an offense. Nothing ever good comes for a free play for the offense. Everybody kind of quits. Watch the moments of hesitation. Ward down here. He senses it. He's still standing. The ball is snapped. It's like full on in the quarterback's hands, and he's standing. Delpit kind of hesitates for a second. So they at PFF charted this as cover three, and they have Ward as the man responsible who jumps here as responsible for not being here. I, again, I don't know, man. I, I get, if you want to say this is a, a jump here and you should you should be trying to run under this and drop here, I, again, reading quarterback eyes, I get what he's trying to do. This is just an interesting thing that nobody really feels out. The route here from Downs. I'm leaning toward it was it's on Delpit to sort that out, but being that it was the outside receiver running and kind of sitting out there, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. They charted it to Ward. That's probably the safe person to give that blame to. Part of me thinks that Delpit needs to see a lot of shoulder shimmies from the Colts. It's interesting. So, again, if you, if you watch it again, it looks to me and feels to me like cover three. You could maybe... Again, maybe make the argument that since the Browns like to play this cover two invert, it's some of that. But because you got a, a, a very shallow jump from this safety, but if it's cover two invert, then Ward would maybe potentially be thinking he's playing low hole here, here, and I have to be ready to carry if this guy goes vertical. There's potential for that kind of being the point of confusion. Because Ward is pointing and feels the need to jump it. But again, that's that's a bust. So whatever the plan is, it ain't working. That's a bust. All right, next play out. So it's third and one for their next drive. And this is just a great job by Maurice Hurst of shooting a gap. Wanted to draw your attention to him. He's number 90 right here. Does a great job, as you can see, of jumping this one. That blows a play up, right? Get off the field. Third and one. Next play out. Or next drive out. Sorry, guys. Second and ten. Second and ten. Catch the Browns, and man, this would be the now second time in two games the Browns have been beat up a little bit that a rail route from the running back against man has hurt them. And again, man indicators here, here, this is what they know. Like, he's giving it away that he is locked on to the back. We are just going to just kind of run a little rub route that makes him the, the coaching point for the wide receivers. I don't want him going over you. So whatever depth you have to be to make this linebacker that will run under you to chase the rail route, that's what we need you to do, right? These shadows really suck. Watch his depth. He just gets, just stand there. Doesn't touch him. Just in the way. 
It's got to be a fix for that. They have to get better at defending that. Third and two. So this is, again, this is like read flat wheel stuff that the Texans used to run with Deshaun. It's actually interesting the way they go about this. They're running a variation of it. Right? Let me play it for you. It's so bad. So the concept they're running is this. They say we're going to take Pittman, run him on a stick route right here. Going to take the tight end initially, selling here, climbing, corner. And then this is a flat runner, right? And then we're reading this edge. If he goes inside, pull it, make a throw determination. Browns are playing. What looks to me like how Ward handles things is quarter or uh, cover three, where they're bumping to a late cover three movement. So he's going to pull the ball off of Zadarius's inside approach. Delpa says, I'm trying to take away the flat. Ward should be back here to handle this drop underneath it. We're trying to run to this spot. What we can't do is allow the quarterback to just run back up inside is because again, look at the confusion. So you have two people chasing the flat. Like, like you can see Newsom's running for it here and Delpit here and here are chasing the same player. So the confusion on who to cover creates a, a void of space. Turns into a touchdown. Gardner Minshew, 14-7 Colts, first and 10. Right, Big run happens. How does a big run come together? Everybody's fitting. Looks to me like the fit for Delpa is inside. Has to be really, really tight. Run off this hip to make this play because we have it fit here. We have it fit here but you can't get beat back inside to your gap. And then you get 96 who thinks he's going inside. It's a great cut from the running back. I mean, Moss can play. I don't know what their plans are with him considering Taylor's back, but Moss can play. It's a great run. Colts are unique, man. Steichen's tough. So situationally, again, 14-7, first quarter still, first and 10. This is the first Miles Garrett strip sack, and this is a pretty good job of coverage, right? I like this pass off. So Ward knows he's got a flat movement here. He's going to bump. Newsom's going to bump. So you got those guys painted up pretty well. Probably trying to get back. Minshew's probably trying to get back to this over route, which has a chance, but the pressure is so fast it. It uh, takes it away. You get a fumble recovery, which leads to some points. I believe it to be a field goal. Here's the tight view of the same play. You don't want this collision to happen. Good job by Miles. Let's see how Miles wins this rep. Looks like a little Euro step where he goes inside, boom, back out, knock the hand away. No, just rips up underneath. Right, stays down, bends low. Looks like Elliot maybe got away with a little face mask grab. Minshew's trying to come back to the running back there at the last second. Looks like Walker gets it on the bottom of the pile. All right, second quarter, 14-22. The Browns have tied it at 14, so this is after the... Uh, I think this is after... I'm not sure which touchdown occurred there to make it 14. Want to play this one. give you a good look at how tower teams cutting down the Browns boot, like the backside drag Emerson is just too slow identifying the backside drag. And that's why it's open. Everything else is pretty covered, but Emerson doesn't cover that, but he doesn't cut it down. He's got to be a hard angle at this moment right here. It's got to be a hard angle and cut it down.
Still 14 all, same drive. Again, just duo. Yep. Looks to me like duo because you would have everyone blocking back and you'd be pulling a guard normally, so you're not. So the free player he's reading is JOK. Make a cut off of it. They're sort of overloading this left side because of motion. These two backers have to win. If they don't win, and you got a slant happening where 93 is slanting here, you have to be able to get through. You don't, and then it's a, another big run. Same drive again, 14-14. Get flat motion, turn it around. This is just an RPO. Simple read for the quarterback. You like how this pulls open the window. So the high motion, you know as a quarterback that this is going to, this orbit motion is going to pull Newsom. So your read on this is you're either giving it or if this backer is in drops into the window, you're giving it. If he plays the run read, you have a very comfortable window to throw to if the corner isn't squeezing the slant. So this is, as you will see, plays the run. An easy throw. Still 14 all. Second quarter. Same drive. I just want to kind of highlight this doesn't end up meaning anything, but this is a staple of like the wide zone offense. Kevin Stefanski, Kubiak, Shanahan. This is called tight end leak. So you'll you'll sell run. You'll get everybody moving front side on the run. You'll sell boot and push back. And tight end is obviously selling it here and then he's selling it down the line and then turning it up. The Browns cover it really well. But like to have Steichen's RPO offense and have these elements put into it as well, right? That's a it's an impressive array of offensive weaponry. If Taylor just catches that, you have a chance to make a play. But anyway, third and thirteen now. This is a great job by Delpit triggering on the tight end screen. Tight end screens are, and most screens in general, man to man are just not going to work. So they're thinking the Browns would have been in zone on this last play here. If they get zone, then it's a good screen. He's got a chance to be, but man, it's sort of dead on arrival. Browns get a field goal. I'm going to draw attention to this negative play. This is a great job by Jordan Elliott displacing right here. You know, playing, you know, the shade, taking Quentin Nelson backward. Like there's no cut to be made because he's created. Now he gets sort of knocked off his feet, but he's created so much negative momentum and, and completely broken off. I mean, what are the Colts trying to do guys? They're trying to run, you know, sell here and then, and then run a split zone block and get up inside of this. But 96 is so good here, disrupting the contact line that you can't even get that block. So it leaves Okoronko there to just sort of clean up that play. Right. Ball seemed like it might have been out. All right, still 17 14, second quarter, third and eight. Get a stop, get off the field. Big chance. There's a 36 yard gain that ends up being right there. How did it come together? Well, the Browns are playing man, right? Colts are doing an interesting thing, which is this stack alignment. They're selling two rub route runners, but then they decide. This little wrinkle is fun. We're going to whip this player back, Josh Downs, and put him back on a corner off of it. Watch as Newsom has him. Ward is chasing the other one, and Newsom is just completely left out. And he has no feel for that move. Nowhere to be found. Again, that's a good man-to-man -man beater. On the other side of it, you can't let this player break contain. Miles is making a move, trying to get through, and then like they're, he's upfield here. So is this a twist? If this is a twist, which it looks like it is, you can't give up. Like We need somebody to be able to handle quarterback escape because this is a, an easy throw. Yeah, 
Anyway, first and 10 play here. Might be the next one. This is just pen pull. I'm not entirely sure how this isn't called a hold on Pittman because he's he's literally hanging on to the underneath arm of Delpit. Looks like a hold to me. Got to be able to fight through. Ward has to come up and shoot through the legs of Taylor here. Can't put a hand out, man. Not on Jonathan Taylor, not on Zach Moss in this game. You're the unblocked man. Got to be able to get him down. Some of those efforts in this game that felt like some of the older efforts. Can't have that. Can't have that. All right, so now third and seven again. Get off the field. Looks like man-to-man -man pre snap, but the Browns actually do a pretty good job of dis uh, disguising it here. But it's a lack of identification from JOK. So what you're getting are layered routes with a little mesh here. JOK, once he gets his eyes back inside, he's going to see the man he needs to take. Right? Boom. Pittman. Right there. Got to take him. Doesn't go with him. First down. This is the same issue that happened in the Baltimore game because what you have is Mabel... Right, so you have a Meg check here. So Emerson is going with this tight end wherever he goes. You have to be aware as this curl defender if the back is away from you. So this becomes quads, right? So you got one, two, three, four. Normally, if the back was here, you'd be man to man on him, right? So if he's away, you have to then get your eyes and be ready to cover anything that comes into your zone on this wide side of the field. That's JOK's. He's got to feel that out. Everything else is relatively covered. So just missed assignments. Hurt the defense badly. And you're going to see this one again. Here it is. So this is an even less complex version of what they ran for the first touchdown. All you're getting here... Is it now now flat with the slant? Reading here. Ideally, if you can throw this, you're trying to throw it. If you pull it, you can also throw the slant. If neither are open, you're kind of in no man's land. It's covered really well. I mean, you could say Emerson's a little late to that and needs to be there, but you got to have, if you're going <laughs> to, here's my general point. If you're going to send this player as a crash player, that's fine. Who's your scrape guy? Who's your scrape guy for the quarterback? Because there's some confusion on this, clearly. Thornhill's late to it, so he's trying to play catch-up, and having to play catch-up allows Minshew to cut back inside. So again, just confusion about stuff that I didn't think that they would have confusion about. Now, these are just two great plays to end the half. It's a great job by Jordan Elliott, first down play. Right? What does he do? How does he create this sack from shade? He's outside, so the Colts are running an inside zone blocking pair on this RPO, but he starts inside and works back outside and creates the leverage on Nelson. So quarterback pull, he wants to throw here. You know, Where does he want to throw? Again, we just talked, it's the same concept. It's a, it's a now flat with a slant, and you can see Pittman is open, but quarterback can't throw it. A great job by Elliot. Get that sack. I think this is maybe the tight view of it. Yep, look at him win upfield. You can see where the quarterback wanted to go with it. So great play. And then an even bigger one on the next one to create in the end zone. Second and 15. It appears to me that Minshew and crew are trying to get a double move at the bottom of the screen here on Martin Emerson. Looks like an out and up from Pierce that they he's hanging on to throwing. It's a very, a very bold throw on second and 15 to think you have that much time against Miles. I mean, he could 
<laughs> yeah, he could potentially be open, and he's trying to throw it, but that's a long developing route when you're standing in your end zone. I mean, I thought Emerson still had a be the ability to recover there. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. The Colts try to chip Miles right here at first. And they get a hand on him. The tackle barely gets a hand on him. That ain't going to cut it. That's like, like the absolute momentum change there, man. So now we're second half. First drive out for the Colts down 27-21. Great play. It's Elliot again. He gets actually kind of gets chucked right here into it, but fights through, gets hands on, makes the play. Great game from 96, I thought, for the most part. Third and two. Third and two. Yeah, Colts go back to it. Denzel reads it. Right, let's go back and watch it again. Same almost identical stuff here. Cover three. You're gonna get a flat. So it's not a three man route side. Instead, it's a two. You're gonna get a flat with a little clown route off of this in and out. Reading here. If he's a crash player, pull it and go outside. They're actually in a pretty good spot. I mean, Minshew can run this for some yards. He can also just dump it off to 85. Again, I just don't understand what the Browns like. They, it was like they had no plan for quarterback pull. Like they never thought Minshew would pull the ball. So again, you have crash, crash, inside player, and there's nobody for scrape. It's pretty strange. It was a big mistake by Minshew. Denzel does a great job. Of punching out, recovering, and getting underneath that and making that play. This is the tight view. You can see how you can see what Minshew sees. The great job from Ward cutting underneath that. And also on these returns, the same thing with Emerson last week. Can we get to the sideline? Look at the look at the <laughs> Like you have a convoy here, man. You have here, here, here. Like get outside. The sideline is where all returns should go. Look at that. Eesh. Anyway, big play though. Great play by Ward. 30-21. Toss sweep bootleg. This is actually just a great job by Josh Downs, and I wanted to illustrate it. On the back side, you're gonna get a drag. Again, you're gonna get that same sort of in-working clown route coming back outside you're going to get a drag right so it's just a it's just you're selling front side pin pull stuff selling the sweep and then booting off of it but this is a great job by downs of like feeling out that ward is dropping underneath his route and then just kind of hitching it up in this area a great i mean it's, it's a really nice adjustment from a rookie receiver colts kind of go down the field methodically kind of an example of if you don't root out this double team shelby harris trying to fight it through if you don't get through runners like if jok isn't able to go through here and you don't get this win here if you're late by a split second you're done. You can see how the push. That's why I love inside zone. The margin for air is so tight. 109, third and eight now. Miles jumps again. Listen, man, if you jump, just either hit the lineman or go to the quarterback. Stop giving them free plays because the quarterback's just going to take a shot throw. It's so frustrating. And Emerson's in a pretty good spot here. He just kind of gets upfield a bit too far. And Pierce is able to let him run by and then hauls it in. So that's a huge 38-yard gain. Second and nine. This is against man. And again, these teams who know you're running man and have a feel because of your alignments, you're running it. Watch. 
That should be a touchdown. So you're just going to get two players that are going to form um, a course that he has to run through, and he's just taking it underneath, forcing Rodney McLeod to try to run underneath it as well. If you get to some down and distance indicators, they got a rail route they're trying to hit. And Pittman, that should have been that should have been six. So the Colts, I think. Yeah, you're really fortunate because that led to only three points. And again, you want to know, like, you know, the Browns are heating this one up, right? So they're bringing five and they're leaving a free safety. If you don't bring five, traditionally what the Browns have been doing is punching out a middle sitting player to take away some of this stuff, but they risk it and bring five. And you might be asking, well, how do they stop that? Well, you have to have, you know, some support. And there's not a support player there because they decided to risk it for the sack. So this is the touchdown in the game because the Colts kind of went into to, to careful mode. You know, I was just talking about, I'll let it play through. Sorry, guys. I've not been perfect about that. 33-31, key moment. Denzel Ward had left the game for a little bit was checked for a concussion. So this is what happens. Ward is our, sorry, Newsom's outside. Now, again, this is what they're doing. So 42 on the running back, right? Tight end, Delpit. I think this is, I'm not sure who that is. That might be Mike Ford. Not totally sure. You can see the man-to-man coverages. And then what you have is a middle drop player, and a middle safety helping. You have outside. You're outside forcing in. You don't want to give up any outside routes. Now, these two are probably reading for where the back goes, wherever he releases. If he stays in the block, you have two droppers, two middle droppers. They're reading run, so that draws both of those guys up. So when both of those guys go run read, there's not, a, there's not much middle support. So you don't have a middle drop, right? So you got this free safety middle hole, but you have a lot of open space right through here to hit the football to because you don't have the linebacker drops underneath it. And you have him, he's chasing here, chasing here, and this is a throw you can make if you don't close it quick enough. And that's what you'll see. And you can't miss a tackle. Two people get hands on him and don't bring him down. Right? Here's the tight view of it. See that open window? Good. I mean, that's a great delivery, too. I mean, look at the, the push Dalvin Tomlinson is taking through 75 and, and, and driving him into Minshew's lap, and he delivers it. Got to get him down. That's a wrap. So... Again, defense was a lot of missed assignments. A lot of missed assignments, and they got beaten spots. And, you know, you can't have that. You certainly can't have that for the, some of the risk-style stuff that they take here. So you hopefully see them get better offensively. Points left on the field. Hopefully P.J. Walker plays better. That's going to be him this week. We'll see what the Seahawks do to try to scheme them up. We'll see what the Browns do to try to beat some of the tendencies that teams are putting on the field to try to beat them up on the defensive side of the ball with some scheme stuff, right? So it should be a fun weekend. The, the Seahawks will present an interesting challenge, but the Browns have to figure some things out, right? It's in their lap too. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by Chalk Talk. Sorry it was late. We'll catch you next week on Monday. Go Browns.